Is faster memory really worth it for AM5 based Ryzen CPUs? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase performance with a drop in upgrade. In this video, our focus will be on measuring the impact of memory speed on AM5 based Ryzen CPUs. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 18 games, I will also demystify core clock for frequencies and show how they impact system performance. And if you stick around, I will share with you how to optimize your core clocks, something every AMD Ryzen CPU user will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first demystify the AMD AM5 platform. AMD introduced the AM5 chipset in September of 2022, together with the launch of Zen 4 7000 series CPUs. Early DDR5 memory stability on AM5 was not great, and I had a lot of trouble getting DDR5 6000 Expo stable at launch. These issues were slowly ironed out, and in July of 2023, AMD released the Jiza 1.007B, which provided enhanced stability together with a massive speed boost. With this enhanced support came an expansion of Expo memory kits, from 6000 all the way up to 8000. With so many more options now available, the question I see a lot from AMD Ryzen CPU owners is, which memory kit should I buy? AMD's official recommendation for AM5 based Ryzen CPUs is 6000 mega transfers per second. The primary reason they recommend this speed is because DDR5 6000 RAM combined with default motherboard settings will be stable on virtually all AM5 Ryzen based systems. This doesn't mean that other kits won't be stable, but for big companies like AMD, they try to minimize risk. And the best way to do that is to recommend something that will work for everyone, not something that will provide the best performance. So to determine what memory kit to buy to maximize performance, we first need to understand the Ryzen CPU architecture a little better. For AM5 based Ryzen CPUs, there are really only three core clocks that you need to understand in order to learn how to select the right memory kit and optimize your system. The best way to explain them is with the simple graphic, showing the key CPU elements and how they interact with each other. On the IO die, there are a few core elements that are important to understand. The first is the Infinity Fabric, which runs at FCLK. This is how the CPU passes information from each core complex die or CCD to the unified memory controller. The memory controller runs at UCLK and is essentially the component that connects the CCDs via the Infinity Fabric to the physical memory interface. The memory interface connects to the RAM DIMMs to pass information between the CPU and RAM, which runs at MCLK. So in order to extract max performance from an AM5 based system, you need to optimize three core clocks. One, the Unified Memory Controller Clock, or UCLK. Two, the Infinity Fabric Clock, or FCLK. And three, the Memory Clock, or MCLK. But how do you do that? To optimize the core clocks, you first need to select a RAM kit that your system will support. The memory speed that you're able to run stable will depend heavily on the quality of your motherboard. So you can use your motherboard qualified vendor list or QVL to help guide you. However, as the memory speed increases, you'll be forced to run the unified memory controller at half the memory speed for your system. In BIOS, this is typically denoted by a UCLK mode option, which will show UCLK equals MCLK or one to one mode and UCLK equals MCLK divided by two or two to one mode as choices. Some motherboards will automatically switch to 2 to 1 mode when you set your memory above 6000. So if you buy a 6400 kit, I recommend setting this manually. It's also important to understand that the max UCLK that you'll be able to run stable will be heavily dependent on the quality of your CPU, often called the silicon lottery. The absolute maximum memory speed that you'll be able to run stable in 1 to 1 mode if you get very lucky is DDR5 6600, and this would be for a golden sample chip. This is why memory manufacturers don't make 6600 Expo kits, because the chances of having it run stable are very low. Above 6600, you'll be forced to switch to two to one mode. However, speeds below about DDR5 7600 are not great options because your system will perform worse than simply running DDR5 6000 in one to one mode. So how do you select the best MCLK, UCLK and FCLK combination? Stay tuned until after the benchmarks to find out. As mentioned earlier, the focus for this video is on measuring the impact of memory speed on AM5 based Ryzen CPUs. To do this, I selected three popular G-Skill 32 gigabyte DDR5 Expo memory kits, 6000 CL30, 6400 CL32, and 8000 CL38. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9700X. 
For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 kits. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have an ASUS ROG Thor 1200W Platinum 2 power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks and the 9700X optimized with the following tweaks. I turned Expo on, I set a negative 30 all core curve offset, I expanded the CPU power limit, I set an 80 degrees Celsius thermal limit, I increased the max CPU boost clock by plus 100, I tightened the memory sub timings, and I set TREF equal to 65535. A step-by-step -step guide for how to apply these tweaks can be found in my recent 9700X review. In order to thoroughly test the memory, I ran the benchmarks at 1080p low settings. This will place maximum load on the CPU, which is the best way to determine if RAM speed will have any impact on gaming performance. With the DDR5 memory kits ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As mentioned earlier, extracting max performance from an AM5 based system requires you to optimize three core clocks. So how do you select the best MCLK, UCLK and FCLK combination? To help answer this question, I put together a table showing the optimum FCLK for each DDR5 RAM kit option. The second column shows the MCLK, which will be half the rated DDR5 speed since the RAM is double data rate. In one-to-one -one mode, shown in blue, the UCLK will be equal to the MCLK. However, in two-to-one mode, shown in red, the UCLK will be half the MCLK. In one-to-one -one mode, it's not possible to run the FCLK at the same speed as the UCLK. So unlike older AM4-based systems, this means your system will not be synchronized. You do, however, gain a small benefit from running the FCLK at a 3 to 2 ratio. So an optimum FCLK for DDR5 6400 in 1 to 1 mode would be 2133 MHz. In 2 to 1 mode, it is possible to run the FCLK at the same speed as the UCLK, so as a result, your clocks can now be synchronized. That means an optimum FCLK for DDR5 8400 in 2 to 1 mode would be 2100 MHz. As you can see, once you select your memory kit and mode, your MCLK and UCLK are locked in. So the only real choice that you are left with is what FCLK to run. Your system will typically perform better at higher FCLK values. However, you will run into stability issues if you push it too high, which is why aiming for some form of synchronization is typically a good idea, even if it's fractional. If you do decide to push your FCLK as high as possible, a good rule of thumb is to push it until it no longer works and then back down two increments. Your system should then be stable. To show what type of performance improvements you should expect to see with these settings, 
I ran Cinebench R24 and 3 Mark CPU profile for each of the DDR5 RAM kit options. As expected, I was unable to get my DDR5 6600 memory kit stable in one-to-one -one mode at an FCLK of 2200. I got it to boot a few times, but I couldn't get it to run Cinebench. As I mentioned earlier, you would need to get extremely lucky with the silicon quality to get 6600 to work in one-to-one -one mode. I was, however, able to get all of the other options stable, and the results are displayed in this table. The multi-core Cinebench score appears to increase linearly with MCLK, regardless of latency, which would indicate that it's generally better to run higher frequency memory. However, the 3 Mark CPU profile scores don't show a similar linear trend, even though there does appear to be some benefit to running high-speed memory, even in 2 to 1 mode. It's also interesting to note that the power goes up significantly as you increase FCLK. Hopefully this helps explain how to extract max performance from your AM5 based system. In this video, I tested three popular DDR5 Expo kits to see if buying higher speed memory is really worth it. As you can see from the results, it was not a clear cut victory for DDR5 8000, with DDR5 6400 doing surprisingly well, especially when it comes to average FPS. If we look at the average performance across 17 gains, we see that the 8000 kit was only able to offer a 2% increase in average FPS and a 6.2% increase in 1% lows, whereas the 6400 kit was only able to offer a 1.6% increase in average FPS and a 3.6% increase in 1% lows. Not exactly mind-blowing performance increases. There are memory-bound titles such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, where we see a significant increase in 1% lows for DDR5 8000 RAM, but this appears to be an exception rather than the rule. Given Given how small the average performance improvement is in gaming, combined with virtually no measurable difference in professional workloads such as Blender, it's tough to recommend high-speed memory kits based purely on performance. But in order to properly answer the question of whether they are worth buying, we also need to look at cost. A baseline DDR5 6000 CL30 kit currently retails for $113, US whereas the kit of 6400 CL32 is around $10 more. However, a kit of high-speed DDR5 8000 CL38 is selling for almost double the price of the 6000 kit at the time of filming this video. So if you convert that difference into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the 6000 kit delivers significantly better value, with the 8000 kit a long way behind at about half the value, which is crazy. So the answer to the question is a resounding no. It is not worth buying a higher speed DDR5 Expo memory kit if you have an AM5 based Ryzen CPU. You will get a small improvement in performance, however, However, there is no guarantee that your system will be stable, and even if you do get it to work, the additional cost will destroy any value that it might have offered. One thing to keep in mind is that this is the best case scenario at 1080p low settings, so if you game at higher resolutions and settings, or if you own an X3D chip with extra L3 cache, your reliance on RAM will be reduced, which means the performance increases you will see will be even lower. So my strong recommendation is save your money and stick with a DDR5 6000 CL30 or CL28 kit. It may sound cool to run higher speed memory, but it's simply not worth it for AM5 based Ryzen CPUs. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you would like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, please also consider joining our new membership program. Bye for now.